Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. David Pugh. I'm a staff scientist at the Cal State Utilization and Core Laboratory. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to create a Conda environment for PyTorch Geometric. So PyTorch Geometric is a GPU accelerated library for uh, doing graph convolutional uh, networks using PyTorch. And we have a lot of users who are doing um, uh, graph neural networks here at Calst, and they often have trouble installing PyTorch Geometric using Conda. Uh, it's a little tricky, has some kind of uh, special kind of advanced features for using Conda and PIP together. And so I thought I would take this time to make a little video to explain how I've solved this problem so that you can just get on with doing your work with PyTorch Geometric. OK. So there's a couple of prerequisites for this video. First, you need to have installed uh, Miniconda in your IBEX home directory. If you've not already done so, we have a video on our YouTube channel about how to do that. Second, you need to be familiar with how to build a uh, Conda environment for PyTorch. We also have a YouTube video on our, um, on our channel about building a Conda environment for PyTorch. So, if you've not already done both of those things, please make sure you've done those um, before you start this video. OK, so with that in mind, here I'm logged into IBEX. And I have a little Conda environment examples uh, directory um, that's linked to a GitHub repository where I create different Conda environments that I think might be of interest to the Kaos community and upload them onto GitHub so you can see the configuration files. And so. In the directory at present, we have two files which I copied over from the PyTorch, uh, the basic PyTorch environment. So that's our environment.yaml file, which builds a, a PyTorch environment for the most recent version uh, of CUDA. And then our environment creation bash script, which is going to come in handy uh, today. OK, so the first thing we want to do is check out uh, our PyTorch geometric uh, instructions for installation. OK, so PyTorch geometric recommends um, using pip to install uh, their binaries. And they have made binaries available for particular versions of PyTorch and particular versions of CUDA. And you can use pip to download those binaries so you don't have to have uh, you don't have to compile any of their custom uh, C++ and CUDA extensions if you can make use of either the particular versions of Torch and CUDA, which they supply. So they have um, PyTorch versions 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, which is the most current, and then CUDA 9, CUDA 10, 1, 10, 2, and CUDA 11. So lots of different combinations uh, for which pre-compiled uh, binaries exist. And so hopefully you can make use of one of those. So that's the video that I'm going to explain today is how to make use of these pre-compiled binaries, because that's most of the users at Calst um, are using some combination of this version of these versions of PyTorch and CUDA. OK, so the first thing that I'm going to do is actually just go ahead and um, copy the installation instructions here. Oh. And then we're going to open our, our uh, Conda, our create Conda environment shell script. Now, we are going to paste these instructions into the shell script. But then we need to modify them um, a little bit. So we need to. The first thing that we need to do is after the Conda environment is created, we need to activate this Conda environment. Okay. So then this is this command will activate the Conda environment, and then to be sure that the uh, the version of uh, pip that we use is the version of pip that's actually installed inside the Conda environment. We're going to prepend these pip instructions with python-m. And what this does is it uses 
Python inside the active conda environment to run pip as a module, as a Python module, and then run the install command. It's just an alternative way of running a pip install command, but one that is really useful in this context because it guarantees that the version of pip that is being used is indeed the version of pip that is inside the conda environment because that's the only version of PIP that the Python inside the common environment would be able to run like this. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is to make sure that torch scatter, torch sparse, torch cluster, and torch uh, spleen convolutions are installed using the pre-compiled binaries that the authors of torch geometric have made available. And the way that we do that is by specifying the find links URL. And that's what this dash F stands for. So I'm just going to expand this out um, to use the long form of the option. Make this window a little bit bigger. Okay. Okay. And so each of these um, by providing this find links option is providing an extra URL where um, pip can search to find a precompiled binary. Okay. And the next thing that we need to do is define the version of torch that we're going to use. So 1.7.0 and then the version of CUDA that we're going to use, which in this case will be CU 11.0. So, and from the instructions over here, you can change the torch and the CUDA version to some other combination if you want to install those combinations. Okay. Uh, so this looks uh, well and good. There's one other thing that we need to do. And we want to make sure that for torch scatter, torch sparse, torch cluster, and torch spleen convolutions, that PIP only looks at this URL and not um, somewhere else, such as the, the Python package index. So we can do that by putting a no index uh, option, which means that for these packages, pip is only allowed to look at the provided URL and nowhere else. What this means is that for some reason, if we had a typo in here or the URL was like slightly wrong, um, pip would not fall back and check the Python package index. It would just fail. So that's exactly what we want. Um, finally, when installing via pip, I like to avoid using the pip cache. Uh, the, the pip cache can be a way where if you have many conda environments on your system, the pip cache exists inside your home directory. And so when you're pip installing stuff into different library or different conda environments, sometimes things can end up in that cache directory that um, might get used in across different environments. And that, that kind of uh, can create problems. And so the way that I like to get around that is by, um, is by providing the uh, no cache dir option, which just means that pip's not allowed to look in the cache, dir, the cache directory when installing. OK. And now we don't need the no index for the torch geometric because we actually want to install torch geometric from the Python package index itself. So if we added the no index flag here, then torch geometric would fail. All right, so I'm just going to expand this out so it's visible everywhere. OK, so uh, there's one last thing that we want to do, which is a bash script thing. So now that we have this multi line bash script, we should. Um, Add some comments first off. So activate the conda in before installing pip. <clears throat> if 
a torch metric be a pip and then this uh, creates the conda environment okay now the other thing we want to do is we want to actually make sure that this environment script fails if any single command fails and this helps prevent accidental um or prevents commands from continuing to run if a previous step has failed. And if any step in the script fails, we just want to stop. So the way that you can enforce that is by a set dash E. This is a bash script um, um, setting that for this bash script, the dash E just means that after each step, if there is a, uh, if the command fails, then just stop executing the script and, and exit. Okay. Cool. So I think that's all that we want to do here. So let's uh, save that. There's a couple other things we need to do. So we need to look in the uh, environment.yaml file. Okay. So let's go back and take a look at, uh, I'm just going to grab this URL here. Okay. So this is the URL that, um, that pip is actually going to visit when it downloads the binaries for torch cluster, torch scatter, torch sparse, torch spleen convolution. And one of the things that you can see in here is that there are different builds um, for different OSs. So we have Linux and Windows in here, and for different versions of uh, C Python. So we have C Python 3.8, 3.7, and 3.6 for all of these different uh, combinations. And then, of course, the URL itself is pointing you to binaries that have been compiled for Torch 1.7 using CUDA 11. OK. So um, what we want to do now is actually pin our versions of PyTorch and Python. So we're going to set Python at 3.8 and PyTorch at 1.7. And the rest of them, we can allow Conda the freedom to kind of choose. So we'll save that. OK. Now, the last thing that I like to do is um, I like to follow a kind of um, conda wherever possible and pip only where necessary. So if I was to run this environment creation script now, it, sh it will probably be successful. But pip will download a lot of extra dependencies um, that weren't listed in my environment.yaml file. So. Um, for example, if we were to visit um, uh, not PyTorch cluster, but um, PyTorch geometric. So if we if visit PyTorch geometric, and then we look in the setup.py file. So the setup.py file is where pip gets its information about what the dependencies are for um, for this library. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of stuff here, most of which is not actually in, listed in, in our environment.yaml file. And what this means is that um, PIT would actually install most of these dependencies and any of these dependencies dependencies instead of having Conda install these things. So I would prefer for Conda to install these things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just add these to the environment.yaml file. So you can add them in any order. I like to add things in alphabetical order. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so here I'm just going through and adding, um, explicitly adding these dependencies. And I'm pretty sure that all of these uh, dependencies are available via the Conda Forge channel. But if they're not, um, I will get a, an environment. The environment won't be able to solve. So I will know if that's the case before. Um, I will know if that's the case before the environment even starts running. So second learn, then we need number. Um, 
and then requests RFD lib or no RDF lib. And then pi. And then, oh, I missed pandas. And Google Drive downloader. ASC and GG2. Okay. Okay, so now I think we are actually ready to go. So if I hit Control X to save that, that yeah, looks good. Okay, so now we're ready to run the environment creation script. Here we go. Now, I've been testing this, uh, this kind of environment installation process um, before I made this video. So I've already downloaded quite a lot of the packages from Conda and PIP. Um, and so on the Conda side, most everything will be cached. And so you won't see a lot of, um, of uh, downloading and extracting of Conda packages. So when you run this script or when you follow along um, with this video, your environment may very well need to download quite a lot of packages from various Conda channels before getting started. Okay, I'm just gonna expand this out a little bit. So we can see the logs. So now Conda has downloaded all the metadata for the packages that I specified in the environment.yaml file, and it's solving to find um, the most recent combination of packages that are mutually compatible with one another, given the constraints that I impose, like the version of Python, the version of PyTorch, and the version of the CUDA toolkit. And it's been able to do that. Now it's just getting set up and getting ready to install the Conda environment. While this is running, I'll just mention a couple of things about, uh, about PyTorx Geometric. So the existence of these pre-compiled uh, binaries, uh, in, which are called wheels in the Python kind of pip uh, ecosystem, is significantly simplified the process of installing a content environment for PyTorx Geometric. If the wheels did not exist, then the only way to create a Conda environment for PyTorch Geometric would be to build these packages from source, which would require getting a uh, C++ compiler, uh, which you can get from Conda Forge, but more importantly, would require having access to the NVIDIA CUDA compiler um, in VCC. And there are a few options for getting access to that via the Conda Forge channel. Some of them are a bit flaky. And to be honest, the best way to do that is to just use one of the CUDA modules that is available on IBEX. So for example, if we needed to build from source, they have the instructions for building from source down here. Um, and um, which is what you would have to do if, or if you needed a combination of CUDA and PyTorch that's not supported by um, the, the provided pre-compiled binaries. Um, if there is interest in that, if you want to leave a comment on the YouTube channel uh, about uh, making a video showing how to install from source, then I'd be happy to do that. Um, 
it's doable, but it's, you know, yet another level of complexity um, to the environment creation process. So the Conda environment creation step is going to take a little longer than normal because we added so many of the um, uh, packages to the Conda environment. The speed of Conda environment creation also depends on how much load is on the login node at the time. Um, so one way to speed up your environment builds uh, would be to launch your environment builds as actual jobs uh, on IBEX proper. Um, that's outside the scope of this, uh, of this tutorial uh, or of this video. Uh, maybe I'll make another video on how to do that. Um, but that's a good way to speed up your build by not using the login nodes and by launching jobs uh, to build your condo environments on the cluster. Okay. So now what's going on is you can see that, um, so the condo environment has completed and now we're at the kind of pit PIP stage. So what is going on now is that PIP is uh, downloading the various packages, so torch scatter, and you can see that it's using the URL that we provided. Um, I'll just wait until it's done and then I'll, I'll go back up and finish the explanation of that. Okay, so now we're done. So you can see here in the, the PIP logs that we're downloading the wheel from the URL that we provided. And then it installs uh, Torch Scatter, and it's doing the same for um, for Torch Sparse. And then when it installs Torch Sparse, Torch Sparse has a couple of uh, requirements, so SciPy and NumPy, but both of those are satisfied already in the Conda environment by construction. So there's nothing else to do there. Um, then it installs, downloads, and installs Torch Cluster and downloads and installs the Torch Spleen convolution. And then finally collects Torch Geometric. And then Torch Geometric has uh, quite a few dependencies, but actually all of these dependencies are already satisfied in our Conda environment, which you can see from the requirement already satisfied. And then at the very end, we build the wheel for Torch Geometric. Um, and then we're done. So we can test our installation by uh, activating the environment. And then we can do Python. And now we can import uh, Torch and check that CUDA is available. And finally, we can import uh, the, these pa packages. So import Torch Geometric. And importing Torch Geometric more or less imports, I believe, these other libraries as well. But we'll just go ahead and import them all. And if any of those import statements had, uh, well, so if the, the extensions, both the C++ and the CUDA extensions were not properly installed, then those imports would have failed. So now we can be confident that our extensions are installed and everything is working properly. And Conda deactivate. Okay. Now, so 
uh, I am going to add these um, these files. Uh, to my Git repository, and then as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to push these um, these changes up to GitHub, and they will be available for you uh, to use. I'll put the link to the the GitHub repository in the uh, the extra information section just below the video on YouTube. Um, if you have any uh, uh, any additional questions about how to uh, how to use PyTorch uh, Geometric on Ibex, you know, please let us know in the comments. If you're interested in seeing how to build something from source using Conda, um, please leave some comments. And uh, I can either use this as an example um, or find another example for building, uh, building things from source using Conda. So uh, thank you very much. And good luck with PyTorch Geometric on Ibex.